Okay, good evening. My name is Elizabeth Larson, and I'm the editor and publisher of Lake County News, and welcome to our District 3 Supervi Supervisorial Candidates Forum uh, tonight at the Lake County Courthouse in Lakeport. Thank you for attending, and thank you to the community members who submitted questions. Uh, we're glad to have the two candidates in this year's race with us tonight, E.J. Crandall and Denise Lustelo. And tonight's event is co-sponsored by the Lake County Economic Development Corp and Lake County Bar Association. They uh, are faithful partners this year in, in presenting these events. This is actually our fourth forum of the season so far. We still have one more for the district attorney's race on uh, May 14th. That will also be here. Uh, so we're going to get right to it. We have a, a range of great questions that have been uh, sent in to us by community members and which have been coming in to us tonight here from our audience. And we want to get started. We want to hear from these two, uh, two candidates about their thoughts and their views of, for the North Shore. Um, and we're going to start with opening statements. They will each get one minute just to introduce themselves. And we're going to go in alphabetical order. And then we will go into questions and then we'll go into closing arguments. Or closing, not closing arguments, I'm sorry. I've been thinking too, many about court, too much about court cases recently. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you guys. <laughs> closing, uh, closing statements. Um, so let's get right to it, because they're really the stars of the show. So with, uh, with one minute opening statements, um, and you'll see me again, you'll see me raising cars to just to cue them when their time is coming to a close. So for one minute, just brief introductions, we will start with E.J. Cran. Hello everyone, and uh, thank you Lincoln News for sponsoring this event and having this event move forward. Uh, my name is Ed Crandall, I go by E.J. My name is E.J. I grew up in uh, in District 3, I went to Lake High School. I live on Robinson Rancheria. I'm also the tribal chairman of Robinson Rancheria. I have three children. Um, one graduated from Upper Lake, one will be graduating from Upper Lake, and my youngest goes to Lucerne. My stepdaughter goes to Alcorn University, and my wife and I both live in District 3. Um, I have went to high school there, I went to college. Before, after college, I went to the military, served for some time and uh, got out and came right back to serve the uh, public and I work with my tribe um, and I work in the community as well. So um, that's a little bit about me and um, I also serve as the chair for the planning commission and uh, I look forward to serving the, uh, the district if, if elected. Thank you. Denise. My name is Denise Lustelo, and yes, I would like to thank Lake Co News and everybody present this evening. I would like to offer a track record of inte integrity and leadership to the Board of Supervisors. My husband and I own two successful businesses in the county. We have raised five children in the county. I've graduated from Lower Lake High School. I won't say what year, because that will date me. I am a two-term mayor for the City of Clear Lake. I am a city councilwoman, formerly in the City of Clear Lake. I do live in and reside in District 3 now, along with my husband and children. We have one left at home out of our five. I also am chairwoman of the East Region Town Hall, which is a committee that advocates specifically for um, Spring Valley and the Clear Lake Oaks area, as well as two other committees advocate farther up District 3. But either way, I've been a lifelong resident here, and I offer my public service. If, if and when elected, I will bring every bit of um, integrity and honesty and worthiness to the council. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Okay. So let's get into the questions. We've got several of them and we have a few continuing to come in, so we'll just get started. And uh, EJ won the coin toss and he elected to let Denise go first, so we'll just be rotating back and forth. So the first question, and remember you get two minutes to answer the questions. We'll start with Denise. Increasing the community safety against wildland fires is a countywide priority. District 3 has been impacted by numerous wildland fires over the past decade, from the 2008 Walker Fire through last year's Sulphur Fire. What role do you think the District 3 supervisor can play in increasing fire safety on the North Shore? I believe a supervisor can bring a lot to the table for these types of issues. I was a mayor in the 2015 fire that actually um, encroached right onto our city limits, and I was a resident of District 3 when the Sulphur Fire came. So I believe fire safety is huge. Advocating for fire safety, fire safety programs, um, 
there's just all kinds of things out there that we can do as a community, and working together, we can get that done. Now, that's not to say that we don't need to advocate at other levels for help when these disasters do come. You need to have your links in place, and you need to have your, um, I guess you would call them relationships, with state, federal, and everyone else in order to implement once they have came, how to get them taken care of as quick as possible. But we can do a lot here together without, um, without outside help. We can help ourselves, and it's easy to do if we work together, and that's what I plan to do. I plan on working one-on-one -on -one with the community, anyone who reaches out to me. Thank you. EJ. Yes, um, I think the District 3 supervisor will have a big role. Um, it's better to be, always be proactive than reactive, and especially with the fires, since they, we've had one for the past 50 years, two big fires per year for the past 50 years annually. And um, they, they, they are such a, they are such a dynamic that they continuously put our, um, our leadership in a position to have to focus its entirety and entire um, focus on the fires. So it's very important that we take pre-measures to ensure everybody's aware of how to prevent or actually prevent their homes or their land or, you know, or, or their businesses by, you know, awareness, you know, making setbacks, um, doing proper, you know, adjustments to your home, making sure things are not laying in the yard that are flammable, things like that. So th there's, there's a lot of uh, proactive, uh, proactive uh, approach I think we should be able to take there. And so along with the uh, town halls, uh, that will be, uh, a forum also is where you can get to some uh, grassroots, uh, you know, acknowledgement of that. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with EJ. Um, over the past year, many North Shore assets, which were purchased primarily through redevelopment, which used money sourced from the North Shore communities, have been put up for sale, sold, or threatened with sale. While these sales and proposed sales are being justified due to the county's fiscal concerns, the unique concerns of the North Shore have not been addressed, and proceeds uh, of the funds uh, or of the sales have gone into the general fund. One example is, is Holiday Harbor. Uh, how, as the North Shore supervisor, would you protect your district's assets and resources? And we start with EJ. Well, you know, that's, and we just talked about fires, and that is one of the reasons why the re redevelopment projects did not, that's part of the reason, I wouldn't say all of the reason, but I would feel that that's part of the reason why some of those projects failed. or for well, lack of a better word, it didn't, didn't succeed. Um, I, I would work my best to ensure that with funding, it is streamlined or earmarked for projects in our area. Of course, we're, we're working with four other districts, so of course their needs are gonna be at the table along with mine, so I'm gonna have to be in there and um, ensure that I'm the voice for District 3. Thank you. Denise. Well, this is a hard one because the bottom line is money, right? We all get pushed and shoved against a wall when it comes down to needing money. And um, I said this at the last forum today, both of us sat in a meeting with Carol Hutchinson and we saw the bleak future of the budget for the county. So would I want to sell assets that the community wanted and advocated for and said that they, they had plans for? No, I wouldn't want to do that. But what I believe what we would have to do is re reassess our priorities and our plans at that time to see if it's feasible to be kept, if the community still wants it, or if the community has a different idea and, and a different way to go forward. Not just selling, I don't think that's the primary thing to be doing. I think we need to really take it case by case after the three years of disaster that we've had. Plans could have taken a change and we may need to reassess that but that needs to be done with the community involvement. I would never want any decisions being changed if there was a plan already in place. I would want new community development um, town halls. I want input from the citizens, and I want to know what they want first. And then we would advocate for the best possible outcome for everyone. Thank you. Okay, next question. We start with Denise. What is your opinion of Measure G, the county's proposed 1.5% sales tax measure that's on the June 5th ballot? If Measure G fails, do you support a Citizens Advisory Committee on Finance? 
Okay, so I said this before, I think it's very hard for us to take a position on a measure that we didn't help write. We weren't sitting here at, these, at this dais taking input and deciding on the measure, deciding if it was going to go in the general fund or if it was going to be dedicated. We weren't part of that. So it's very hard to say yes or no, okay? But the bottom line is, do we need it? Of course we do. Is it bringing us up to speed with other cities? Yes, it is. Now, um, if it does pass, great, because then it's going to leave an avenue for a lot of other things to be able to be kept and without being cut, it, cut any, any more drastic cuts that we already have. But if it doesn't pass, I would definitely um, advocate to help build a measure with, co again, community support that could pass if people want, um, there is a sunset clause in this in this measure, but whatever they wanted, if they wanted sunset clauses, if they wanted earmarked funds, if they wanted specific things done, that's what I would advocate for if this did not pass. If it does pass, away we go with it and use it to the best of our abilities. Second part of that question, would you support a citizens advisory committee on finance if it fails? Yes, I would. Thank you. EJ. Can I, just, can I answer the second one first? Yeah. Yes, I Any order you like want to mix it up, please go ahead. <laughs> and the, and the reason is, is the same reason why I, I would support the, uh, you know, it'll obviously be voted by the time, if one of us were elected, by the time we are elected, it would already either be in place or not be in place. Um, so one, one thing that I've, I've been asked this question before, and one of the things that I'm a proponent of is earmarked funds. However, in this situation, our area is in need of this funding. So uh, I, I would be in support of it passing. You know, I am voting for it to pass. And the reason why is because despite my desire for it there to be earmarked funds, I do, I do think we need it. And so that kind of weighs out, um, weighs out the no for me. So the other thing is, is that um, we would just be catching up on the, in the unincorporated areas to the rest, to Lakeport and Clear Lake. So, it would just, it would really, it, we're already, a lot of people that are living in that area already go to these areas to spend their, their money anyhow in some of these, uh, and, and they pay that tax as it is. So now it would just be incorporated into those areas. So um, so I um, I really do think that um, an oversight committee is in place, um, is, is on the current measure G. So that's, that was actually really good for me to hear once I found out that as well, once I did a little more research on it. I was, Really glad to know that there is an oversight committee, even if it does pass. So, thank you. Next question, we'll start with EJ. With the legalization of recreational cannabis, the County of Lake is currently in the midst of establishing regulations for legal grows. However, concerns about illegal grows remain. Um, if significant black market commercial marijuana growing continues in Lake County, what's the appropriate county res uh, government response? Well, the, the appropriate county government response for legal grows is, of course, to, is to just, you know, to, it's already in, in law. They've already put an ordinance together for it. And um, I think it, our best bet is just to um, address it as it comes with the sheriff's department, um, or work to ensure that these people are cited, work to see that these people are um, dealt with for the illegal grows and uh, ensure that their fines are associated with it. And uh, so that that way, if there is someone that is conducting an illegal, illegal grow, they will be not only fined um, to, the, to the nature of, you know, uh, the common fine, fine that's in the listing, but also to the extent to where they won't make the same mistake again. So, you know, so that, that way we can encourage that there is um, legal grows in place rather than Ill illegal grows. Thank you. Denise. I dealt with this issue. Um, it was rampant in the city when I was elected. Um, illegal groves were everywhere. They, deaths were happening. Um, elderly people were being threatened. We had major problems with illegal groves. It didn't happen the first go around. We put policy into place and it wasn't strong enough. It didn't have enough teeth to be enforced. So it got worse. And so then we put in stronger regulations, more black and white regulations that could be enforced and could be prosecuted. 
and we actually went from um, eight homicides one year when it was unenforceable to zero the next year, and that were directly related to marijuana when we made that clear. So what I'm saying is, you have to make sure you make the regulations that are enforceable first, because that's the key. You can make all the policies in the world, but if law enforcement cannot enforce them, you're making them for nothing. So my point being, um, we can do it. We have a, a, a very strong policy now in place that is being enforced in the south end of the county. So if, if illegal grows continue in the county level, we can address that as well once I'm supervisor. Thank you. Okay, next question, we'll start with Denise. Based on your experience as employers, both of you work for large businesses or head up large businesses, what ideas do you have about county employee recruitment, retention, and pay rates? I believe this past week they, the county said that they've, um, they have a, a retention rate or they have a vacancy rate of about 25%, and I'm sure that's a challenge in both of your businesses. So again, what, what ideas do you have about county employee recruitment, retention, and pay rates, and how to improve the employment situation for the county government? Okay, so this, this was a question earlier today too, a similar. Um, we almost have to market ourselves, is the thing. Getting people to come here, we have the age old saying of, we hire them, we train them, you get them. And I kind of had it targeted at me at the uh, Deputy Sheriff's Association when I spoke to them because they kind of gave me a little jab saying, clearly took some of our, our officers, and, and it, that wasn't the intent, but um, that's what happens. They come, we train them, and they go somewhere else for more money. It's either more money, or it's more benefits, or it's a better package, better living conditions. Whatever the case may, may be, retention is one of the biggest problems that I, I see is faced. Um, it, it is 25% on county level, and I believe we are down 11 officers on, on the sheriff's side. Okay, So with that, everybody is, is saying the sheriffs can't do their jobs but without those extra bodies on the on the road we can't get the response times that we need so in order to do this we have to market ourselves now whether that's somehow in money or somehow in benefit package or something to entice these people to want to come and want to be here and advocate for an, a great place to raise their fam families and have a nice job and we're going to have to work at that. It has been a problem for a very long time, and it's not, nothing we can fix overnight. But we have to continually try to strive to make our, ourselves a better place for people that want to be employed. We started our business with just my husband and myself. A couple years later, in 2010, there was three of us. In 2018, total, both, both of our businesses, we employed 28 people. I know how to grow business, I know how to grow jobs, and I can do the same level, I can do that same level of service for the county. I just need to get in here and be able to be doing it. Thank you. EJ. Yes. Um, working with the uh, working with Robinson Ranch Rhea, I've um, I've dealt with this in, in many instances. We train people and they leave and um, we end up trying to find someone else to recruit. And then there's a whole conundrum of issues of hiring someone, and it just becomes a, like a downhill slide. One of the um, one of the avenues that um, I have experience with is encouraging um, strategic planning, thing like that. So we can have um, one thing I'd appreciate that the county has recently done is the Vision 2028, because now they have a roadmap of what they're going to do in the future. That's always a big part. Um, it also encourages others in, in the community and in um, schools, and I think it's important that, that um, as a district supervisor, I work with the, the county superintendent to encourage children and, and give them incentives to, to either get educated or go into fields and come back and work for us and take pride in the community because anybody that takes pride and cares about working where they're at, that's what makes more, that's what makes more of, a, of a person that's vested rather than having someone, recruiting someone to come from the outside to come here because they commonly just leave. So um, with that, that's, that's, that's how I feel about that. Thank you. Next question, we start with the EJ. 
What will be your top three goals as supervisor? I should also warn you, this is a multi-part. So what are your top three goals as supervisor? How will completing these tasks uh, improve District 3? And how will you persuade your board colleagues to support these goals? Okay, so top three goals. Well, is to ensure that we, um, that our corridor in the North Shore and our, our development in the North Shore, our businesses in the North Shore start to thrive again. We have, um, as I said before many times, we have a, um, a county or a, and actually the towns are closest to the lake and um, whole Iowa 20 is, uh, there's, there's, there's um, 7,000 cars that pass through each each day, or yeah, each day through the uh, Highway 20 corridor, and they see the lake as they drive through it, and um, there's businesses there, so that that's a way to tap into the community, the businesses working with them. Um, the other the other thing I feel like working with the the rest of the county supervisors, I I'm pretty dialed in. I work um, you know on a business council with different leaders from different areas and I get a feel as to what they what their needs are and um, I just you know I, I'm a really big proponent of trying to bring consensus and um, and always providing and striving for win-win situations so um, in results so um, I like to follow through on on, on um, any type of uh, you know initiative and so um, that's that's I, I think I've answered one of the questions. Okay. Can you go back? Can you repeat like the second part of it? Sorry. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to it. Okay, so that was the first one, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, second part is how will completing these tasks improve District Three? And the, and I think you just described how we, you would persuade your board colleagues. So Sorry. I think you've actually covered two and three. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just completing the tasks, how will those improve District Three? Well, the the community would of course um, would benefit because of not only the pride of living in this area but um, but people deserve to have um, you know they deserve to live the lives that they lead out to and so like if they're if they're earning an income if they're taking pride in where they live if they're retiring there they want to be able to live in peace and they want to live safe so I think that will contribute to that so thank you mm -hmm. And at any point, don't hesitate to ask me to repeat the questions, especially when they're multi-part. So, um, Denise, so I, you're, I, will, I will let you repeat that. Okay, let me repeat it for you then. Uh, what will be your top three goals as supervisor? How will completing those tasks improve District Three? And how will you persuade your board colleagues to support these goals? Well, first of all, fiscal responsibility and uh, stability, that's number one. Second for me would be um, code enforcement. I feel the North Shore is being very neglected at this time on things like that. And then um, my third, it's, it's a toss up between them. So I'm gonna have to just pick, we've got fiscal responsibility, the budget, we've got code enforcement, and then third is going to be keep on advocating for our lake because our lake is our biggest natural resource that we have to bring any type of development to our area. So the, how I will get these things done is uh, budget is one of my best, I love budgets, I love prioritizing, I love making things um, pan out. My husband thinks I'm crazy and he'll chuckle out there because that, that's the way I am. I have spreadsheets and each little thing has its own little place for money. So budgets are great for me, I love them. Um, code enforcement is a big issue for me. When I was elected um, in 2012, the city of Clear Lake had zero code enforcement, absolutely zero. And by the time I had to resign, we had a full code enforcement department bigger than when, bef before they let it go, um, bigger than then, which was I think 2000, I think they let it go in 2008. So prior to that, we had full code enforcement. So with that, um, we're able to bring that back. And what that will bring is less blight to the community, which will make us a much better um, attraction for people to, to come and visit, reside, take, part, take place in, and want to live. And then with, um, with all of that, we're going to boil it down into being a safer community. 
we're going to work hand, I, I, as a supervisor, am going to work hand in hand with Sheriff Martin to try to get these positions filled so that we do have better response times and so that we can have men on the street to help with the illegal duffings and the, then turn it over to code enforcement and get it handled. But the thing is, we need the manpower. So getting manpower on the streets, code enforcement, and our top priority is our fiscal budget at this point because it's pretty bleak. So that's going to be a main focus of mine. How am I going to get it done? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I start eye that's contacting okay. and I can't yeah. get it over there. <laughs> you can always come back in your closing statements and cover some of the ground that, Thank you. that were, because there was a lot, of, a lot to cover. So uh, the next question, we'll start with Denise. Um, keeping in mind that there is currently uh, a process underway for this building, but one of the questions that came in asked both of you for your ideas about the Lucerne Hotel, or as it's known as the castle, do you have ideas for how to make it a viable asset for the county, or what kind of developers would you seek to purchase it? And again, there is a process underway right now, but you could end up inheriting the results of this, and it's a significant asset on the North Shore, so we'd like your thoughts on, on the building. My thoughts on the building is it's a very special, wonderful place. And when Marymount was here, it was an absolute beautiful thing for everybody, I think. Um, we all benefited. Now again, uh, at the, this is back almost to the first question. What do we do with things if we cannot afford them? I, want, I would want public input at this time that the first, the first way it went didn't work. They left, they're gone. What does the community want for, for it now? Not what I want. That's, that's my whole thing. I am here to advocate for you. So I need to know what the community wants that building to be. And I will reach out if it's, they want it developed, if they want to see a nice hotel out of it or a resort, or if they want to see um, housing, maybe housing projects for, for incoming employees. Whatever they, they vision for this, if that's the community's will, that will be my my goal to get done. Um, I, my, I, my eyes are wide open for that building. It's gorgeous. And I know that there is a plan already in place to try to you know, keep it. And they, that's what the community wanted in the beginning. And I know it's getting to be really hard to sustain that vision right now. Thank you. EJ. So um, I know one thing about it right now is I guess they're having problems with kids man, trying to vandalize it. So that's been, I know, um, one of the issues but aside from that um, you know it, it was initially a hotel of course um, and you know there's been at the, the Lucerne Town Hall there's been a lot of discussion and ideas from many different folks about what it should be and what, it, and what they would like to see the direction of it there's even some folks that really feel that the county should have no place in um, the county supervisor or the county in general should have no place in dictating what it should be but I, I do have to tend to agree with Denise on this one. It is up to the community. But um, I think ideas for it, I mean, there's plenty of ideas. I mean, I know, I know I've talked with um, the tribal health when I first started talking about or hearing about this, this uh, Mary Mount pulling out um, and leaving was I was thinking about having like a recovery center for, um, for, for, for addiction, you know, people, because we have a big problem with people in addiction in the county. And I think that's going to really solve a lot of the problems with homelessness as well. Um, of course, it would have to be well thought out and planned. It couldn't just be a hodgepodge one I've witnessed where people have went to facilities where um, they've been like out in, in their back of recidivism. So, of course, it would have to be a well thought out plan and we would have to have a strategic plan in place so that way we can ensure people that are going there. And that's just an idea. It's not something I would, you know, of course, I would need community input. but. Um, that's one of uh, the solutions that I have. Thank you. Okay, next question. We'll start with EJ. In January, the County of Lake held a series of community visioning forums in each of the county's five supervisorial districts. Uh, one of the concerns that community members raised during the visioning forums was business development. Um, some have faulted the county government for being too difficult to do business with and being resistant to change. So how would you, with your experience, help change that perception, build stronger public-private partnerships, and help local business flourish? Well, the, 
And the way I see the, the lake in Lake County is, is, is the same way that I've, in experience, I've seen some of the businesses that I've operated with. And we have to look at it as if the, everything revolves around the lake. And um, my ancestors that run the land since time immemorial have used the lake for sustenance. And so it is still an essence sustenance. What, what it is for us is it's a, it's a natural beauty that people are attracted to when they go and eat. It's a natural beauty. It's not only a natural beauty, but it's also um, a means of transportation. It's a means of um, food if, if, some, if we can get it, of course, you know, clean to the point where people can really feel confident in eating the food from it. It's also, um, it's also a natural beauty, you know, so for some folks to even come up here just to see it, there's bass fishing, of course, that people do. Um, you know, there's there's just a number of things that um, the lake provides, and, and our people at one time thought of it that way and lived in harmony with it. And I think, you know, if we get back to that essence of life and start, you know, working um, to, to, of course, ensure that it's, um, that it is cleaned and we can somehow um, get it back to its original state, which made it called the Clear Lake when the, the settlers came and seen it as a clear lake, a beautiful lake. I think we can get somewhere with a lot of other economic development. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's my answer. Thank you. Denise? Can I get a question one more time? Sorry. Sure. Uh, in January, the County of Lake held a series of community vision forums in each of the, the five super resort districts. One of the concerns that community members raised during the visioning forums was business development. Um, and some have faulted the county government for being too difficult to do business with and being resistant to change. How would you, with your experience, help change that perception, build stronger public-private partnerships, and help local business flourish? Thank you. So yes, I do hear those same type of things. I, I hear, I can't get through the planning department. Oh, I, they're not being friendly. Oh, I did something wrong. They made me start all over. All kinds of things come up. All kinds of things. So the first thing comes with working with staff and, and having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them, a customer service orientated relationship, because that's what they should be doing, is advocating as a customer service representative for these people wanting to come here. Second of all is we need to pick the proper economic development, not just anything. I don't know if a hundred dollar general is right or anything. Community has to tell us that. Those forums that were done were very well done because they brought the community out. We got to learn and hear what their issues were and what they wanted. So that's what need, needs to be listened to. Again, I keep harping on that, but that's what matters, is what the, the community wants. We're here to advocate for that. And we need to be able to develop in the proper ways that are not going to hurt other small businesses. And what I mean by that is be very careful of what you bring in. You don't want to bring things in that, that hurt the other mom and pop shops. But we need to get our foundation in order first. We need to make sure our, you know, just like building a house, when, you're, when your foundation's done, you can start the structure of the walls. So we need to get in there and get our foundation. Our foundation is our staff. Our foundation is our process, and our foundation is, you know, just those basic fundamental things so that we can work with the developers. And then after that, you bring in the development, and I guarantee once that comes, all the other businesses, along with the residents of Lake County, will all flourish. Thank you. Okay, next question, we'll start with right back with you. Um, the North Shore, like the rest of Lake County, relies on Clear Lake as a water source and as a draw for its tourism industry. Over the past decade, Clear Lake has had an increase in large blue-green algal blooms that resulted in county health warnings. Assemblywoman Cecilia Aguiar Curry recently secured $2 million for a committee to improve the health of Clear Lake, or at least study it, and $15 million for the Middle Creek Restoration Project, which is in District 3. So what role do you see yourself playing in addressing Clear Lake's health and vitality? And do you have a plan for working with state and federal partners? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> On that one, um, our water, our lake, or the water is what just about all of our water companies draw from. It's extremely important that we help vitalize and bring um, that water quality to the best of its health as we can. 
Um, we're not ever going to get rid of all the algae. It's just not going to happen. It's been here for hundreds of years. But actually, the restoration project, the 15 million that we're discussing right now, is a very good start. By starting to bring back the natural filtration into the lake, not man-made filtration, natural filtration that man's already hurt, you know, by taking load away in the past. That is the, the first step of, of helping revitalize our lake ourselves without asking for help. We, we can do that. We got the money at, allocated, so now we can start the project and we can show them that we do want to fix our lake and we can help that and do it ourselves. So with that would, would open up another door of being able to get possibly more funding once we implement this and show them we're using the funding that they already gave us properly. That's a big deal. We have to help ourselves and we have to do it ourselves in order for them to ever look at us to give us more. And yes, I would be a big proponent of working with state or federal, whoever would want to come in and help restore our lake to whatever level that we possibly could get it to. Thank you. EJ. And um, I've been pretty involved um, with that project for the past 10 years. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers and the county has come to multiple meetings with uh, the tribal leadership and other tribal leaderships around the lake. And so I'm very familiar with that project and um, I look forward to being a part of it either way. If I'm elected, I'll be a part of it and if not, I will be a part of it. I will, I, each, the, the state has already asked if we would appoint a person for the Blue Ribbon Committee. So I would be on that committee either way. Um, there's also other measures that um, the tribes, the tribes are dialed in pretty well with, with the with, uh, with solutions for for cleaning the lake as well. So I think that um, with this blue ribbon committee, it will work with the tribes and it will work with the county and it will work with scientists who have these ideas. And um, of course, with the natural filtration taking place, I think that's going to be a, you know a, a great start to getting the lake back to its natural state. Thank you. Next question. I'll start with EJ. Do you believe that the town halls established along the North Shore within the last few years have been functional and effective? Do you agree with Supervisor Jim Steele's statement in a press release late last month that there are so many things that can be done, but they can only be done when you talk with the community in a forum? This is where accomplishments are going to happen locally, at these community councils." End quote. Or do you believe resident, uh, residents have other legitimate avenues for improving their communities? I practice the same, the, the same um, mindset when it comes to um, my leadership as of now. I have committees and I fully utilize them um, in that the capacity of bringing issues forward is very important to hear the community's needs. So I, I think that the town halls are a big factor for the um, for District 3. Um, they, they have issues that they deal with and it, when it, once it goes to the town hall, I feel that um, they are dialed in better than anyone um, to their to their problems, and um, you know I feel that the supervisor who was elected, of course, will be dialed in as well. But it, it, just for for me as a as a leader, I don't like to impose things on the community. I'd rather have them have the insight and buy in, and and being an active in these communities, I think it's a really big deal. So um, I really do feel that they're that they have really helped, and uh, if elected, I would continue. Um, holding town hall meetings. Thank you. Denise? So this was specifically about the three committees that were formed, correct? Yes, just okay. the ones for the North Shore. Very good. So I do think they could be very viable and um, they could be very informative. They could bring a lot of issues to you know, the, the board or the, to the committee that we are and then we could bring them to the board. But if they're not functioning properly, I'm not a proponent of wasting time. I know that much. So we can have a lot of committees, but if they're not doing anything, let's move on to some more energy. You know, invest our energy in somewhere that we can actually see some results. So if they are functioning pro properly and we are getting things done in these committees and we have the public input for that, that's correct. Yes, they need to keep going. If, if they are not productive, if they are not operating properly, and we're not getting any results out of them, they might not be working. Let's find some other way to advocate and get these things done. Because basically, when I am elected, I am your supervisor and you can come directly to me. You don't have to go through a committee. 
and I will return your phone call. I will answer the phone. I will see to it that your issues are discussed, mitigated, and hopefully resolved. Now, a committee can work on bigger, bigger things, yes, but again, if that committee is functioning properly, that's what I'm a proponent of. And if they are, yes, of course. I, could, I would love to have them. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with Denise. The County of Lake has an annual budget that surpasses $200 million. Explain your budget expertise and what priorities you would bring to the annual budgeting process. But budget expertise, boy oh boy, between my personal private business budgets all the way through the city's budgets to everybody's budgets. I've had budgets with almost zero and I've had larger budgets like within the city and now one supervisor of the county. The best thing I can tell you what I can do is I can find, I can find the money. I can go line by line through these budgets and I can figure it out. And if um, it boils down to things need to be adjusted, I'm going to give one example and I'm not going to say I'm going to advocate for that up here because I haven't seen all the options. But one thing I, I advocated for and was successful at was um, seeing that we were spending way too much money in the city on uh, benefit packages for the council. So my feelings were, why are we sitting up here and getting our whole family paid for uh, as far as med medical insurance and our poor employees you know, have to put in money and do this and do that to get their families covered? I think it should be the same. So we exiled the medical benefits as far as for dependents. We, we allowed the council members to still have the medical. If they wanted their dependents on the medical, they must pay for their own dependents. And that was um, the first seed money that we had to be able to implement code enforcement and help animal control and a few things that were really needed. We saved almost sixty-five dollars or $75,000 a year, which was definitely enough to put another man on the streets. So I definitely can find the money and make it work where we need it. Thank you. EJ. Yes, um, I, my current position when I started in 2015, I, um, I came into a position where um, our businesses and our, um, our tribe was in such disarray. Um, you know, we had to make a lot of key and hard decisions. And um, with the $140 million or $134 million budget that we see annually amongst grant funding, you know, revenue, economic development revenue. Um, we, you know, we, we're constantly looking at avenues to, you know, save in, in different areas. We paid off $4 million in debt within the last three years. Um, and so, you know, we've even taken a pay cut ourselves right off the bat. So, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a person that takes those, that makes those type of key decisions. And I, um, I, with the budget each, each year in every aspect, we look at it, we find ways to make sure that we're getting the biggest bang for our buck. We ensure that we're going to get return on investment if we put something into a, you know, um, a venture or if we're going to put money into education or whatever the case may be. We always ensure that it's going to do the best service for, for our constituency. I would take that same mindset and use it towards the county because I really am the type of person that is a steward for the people. So. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with EJ. Community member wants to know, what have you accomplished within the last six months that has improved the lives of District 3 residents? Please state specific tasks completed with details. Okay. Well, I'm on the Planning Commission, so we work towards, um, and that's been for the past two years, we work towards um, the ordinances to regulate the cultivation ordinance. Um, we deal with continuous issues um, that come to the county for permit use, et cetera, and, um, and projects that can help the, the county flourish with economic development. Um, more, more so, uh, we employ we employ 350 community members um, in District Three and you know in Lake County. Um, I you know I coach baseball for the high school. I um, I'm a part of the um, the R three, which is redesign, reinvigorate, redevelop for the school. I attend those meetings. Um, I've went to um, on behalf of you know uh, the tribe. I've been to Sacramento and I've helped with two different bills. One for employment for, for youth because of the um, 
the work permit requirements for students. Um, and I'm also going for uh, primary um, primary registration for tribal TANF participants. So I'm constantly working for, for people in the self-sufficiency aspect um, of community. And um, with the um, employment education, the issue was is that there was no actual federal law or mandate stating that you had to have a 2.0. But every school it imposes this 2.0 on the students to work. So how are you going to be a good student and learn work experience if you can't even get a work permit because you're not doing good in school? So um, Senator Mike McGuire had to help present this bill, and um, now it's it, it hopefully it's going to be in place after July when it goes to assembly. So um, that's just among um, some of the things I do for for the community. So can you quickly just explain to people what tribal TANF is? Tribal TANF is temporary assistance for needy families. Um, it was it was funded to tribes in order to uh, serve the community or serve tribal folks because. Uh, they were giving, most tribal folks were getting social services and they weren't being successful. So the tribes ended up getting funded in a block grant to serve their, to serve the people and they had five years to get on this, the program. They only have five years to become self-sufficient, so. Thank you. Denise. Well, only living in District 3 a short time, I haven't had a bunch of time to do a bunch of things specifically on District 3. I have a long, a long track record of getting things done, but on the Earth Committee, um, since I have chaired it, we have gotten a um, response. We, we wrote a pretty strong letter to Caltrans, and we did get a response from them um, going forward. We would like to be you know, involved in covert work or digging work or anything that may drain into the lake. Um, we wanted to be on first hand with that with them. Um, and we got a response from them for thank thank you for that letter. They will definitely remember we are here and reach out to us and for future projects to hopefully be able to um, mitigate some of that run runoff in our lake together as the community and as our committee with Caltrans or other um, underlying projects that are going on. So that's been the latest thing that's happened in the last year. Thank you. Next question, we start with Denise. Do you plan to implement a method for long-range planning? And how will you evaluate the plans that come from that process? I believe everybody has a long-range plan. Just like in business, you have your opening plan, you have your extent of time, whether you have a 10-year plan or a 20-year plan, and you have your exit plan. So I, I definitely don't think a county ever needs an exit plan, but the thing is we need to have plans. I'm a big advocate of plans. I am a big advocate of strictly following plans unless some sort of disaster or something comes into place and you must renegotiate the plan. <laughs> but the, the age old motto, make a plan, work your plan. So that's what I would like to do is get with this board now, this, these other four elected officials and myself and sit down and really discuss what Carol Hutchinson has just brought light for me and EJ and figure out you know, what is the best plan? Do they have a plan? And I believe they're working on a plan and have implemented some of things, but we do need a plan and I, I am desperately wanting the task of helping to form that so we can better our communities. Thank you. EJ. Yes, so, uh, you know, uh, one of the things too, that, that even in the midst of, uh, you know, preparing a plan or a strategic plan or any of those types of things, um, there's always business as usual, and that's where I really say that there's, you know, this, this issue with the fires, it, it really is something that's always taking our eye away or our attention away from our, from our plans. So I really think it's important that we ensure business as usual is taking place, and that means fire reduction, you know, fire risk reduction. Um, I think that, you know, there is a plan until 2028 in place with the 10 key priorities, and I'll ensure that I, that I do my best to, you know, go along with that plan. You know, but of course, you know, to implement my own plan, you know, I will also dial in with the communities and the town halls to to find out, you know, exactly where they plan where they plan to go. Because also, you know, in, in the unique towns on the on the in District Three, these some of them have different uh, they have different directions that they would like to go with certain things. So I want to make sure that you know, if we implement a plan in Upper Lake, it's not going to affect Clear Lake Oaks, you know, or vice versa, or Lucerne, or Glen Haven, you know. So you know, I would make sure that I would dial that in, of course, with the town halls, so, yeah. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with EJ. 
What is your response to the Trump administration's action to reconsider or cut back a number of national monuments? There have been concerns that this could impact the Berryessa Snow Mountain National Monument, two-thirds of which is located in Lane County, where there were numerous public meetings and strong community support leading up to the monument's establishment. What action would you take to protect it? Well, you know, one of the things that I, I've, been, I've been privy to in my, my experience is, of course, um, you know, I've, I've rallied before. I've had to stand in front of, you know, the very business that I work for now and, and you know, bring attention to um, things that are, I feel are not very, um, you know, they're very fair or just. Um, with, with this intact, in you know, of course, I would, um, I would be a proponent to, uh, you know, of course, with the tribes in the area as well, because I know that they have a voice when it comes to the National Congress of American Indians, and they can use some of those, um, some of the laws that are in place for, you know, cultural preservation, but also um, use that type of, you know, I would say, you know, that, that, that I, not exactly like the laws, because some of it wouldn't apply, but also the, um, the method to get that attention. Um, so. Um, I would also, you know, work on, you know, campaigns and getting people, you know, um, equipped with how they can actually fight this issue. You know, not just through, you know, social media, but also with petitions and whatnot, and, and, and serving those in and hoping that, you know, eventually we can shed light on this on, on this issue and how it can affect us. So. Thank you, Denise. So it's interesting because um, we were involved in a plan. Um, it wasn't a national monument, but it definitely was a monument within the south end of the lake when I was elected. And this happened to be, we were dealing with the state, not quite President Trump's level at that point, but um, this is how you do it. You keep at them, and you keep telling them your plan for that. You tell them how your citizens use that monument. You advocate to keep it. You advocate that you have a plan for it already, that it's already in place that it's, it's working, it's being used, and you just keep advocating. We did this um, down there when they were threatening to take away our visitor center that wasn't quite done yet. We had, um, we had the building, we had it secured, we had the park secured, we had the plan made, we had everything done, and they said, sorry, you can't use it, it was bought with redevelopment money, You're, we're gonna have to cut that, you can't have it, sell it. Oh no, we kept at it, we kept at it, and we kept at it, and there today is where stands our uh, Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce building and South Shore Vis Visitor Center, home for both of them forever. Do you keep at it until squeaky wheel gets the oil? We, until we get what we want preserved. That's the only way to do it. You just have to keep at them. You cannot, you cannot even rest. You have to just fight for what you want and what your community wants. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with Denise. Okay. Some businesses are violating their permit to operate or have no permit at all. What do you plan to do so all businesses are on a level playing field? Oh boy, did my husband write that question? <laughs> he is on me all the time. I can't, there isn't even enough time tonight for me to tell you all the permits and licenses and fees that we have to have to be in operation, okay? And I'm a huge proponent of doing those things. This is what it takes to operate. This is what we do then to operate. And um, I am a huge proponent of if you want to operate the same business I'm operating, you're going to follow the same rules I'm, I have to operate under. So. There's no slipping under the radar with, with me. If it is brought to my attention, it will be looked into. And I believe everybody should have to pay their fair share if they're going to do business in our county. No slipping by, no sliding under the radar, and no doing things just and getting by. Because it happens. It happens a lot. And it, it gets looked the other way. And even I get told sometimes, why do you get so nitty gritty on them? Just leave them alone. They're just trying to make a living. Well, I'm sorry, so am I. And the bottom line is we all have to play by the rules. So I'm a big advocate of making sure that everyone is welcome to do business, but you must follow the rules. Thank you. EJ. So can you just repeat that? Sure. Absolutely. Some businesses are violating their permit to operate or have no permit at all. 
What do you plan to do so all businesses are on a level playing field? Well, of course, um, I would, in District 3, of course, I would uh, look into what businesses we're talking about and conduct research. Um, I consider myself, in essence, like a, you know, a hands-on type of student. I try to study everything and figure out the research first before um, I know the full the full situation because I also know that there's you know there is three tribes in the district, so I would not want to impede on sovereignty if that was the case. But if it was if it was not, um, of course, on trust land, then of course I would you know make sure that the that the businesses are you know doing doing what they're supposed to in order to operate properly. So. That's, uh, that's pretty much my answer. Thank you. May, may I ask a question to make sure I understood that? Sure. We were talking about private business? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yeah. you. So quick, quick lightning round question for both of you, just as a follow-up. There is no actual, like in the cities, they have business permits. In the county, they have other types of things, but not a business permit per se. Quick question, each of you, would you support something like that? Is it doing something similar to what the cities have? Yes. I'd have to look into it. Okay. We're going to start wrapping up. You guys are both so fast with your answers that we're running out of questions. But we've got uh, a good one here. We're going to kind of turn the tables. You've talked about what you've wanted to do and what, you know, what you're going to do for, for the district. But why don't you share with us, and we'll start with EJ. What specific things can District 3 residents do to improve their community? Because obviously you need them to work with you. So what are the things you think are important for them to look into doing to make it the North Shore a better place to live? Well, you know, one of the biggest things I think, you know, I've probably beat the drum on this for quite some time, it's also, it's obviously the fire risk reduction. If you live in your own home, make sure you're, you, you, you're attending to your, you know, Ensuring that you you don't you're not subject to fires, um, attending attending town halls, attending these meetings. It's it's so important and imperative that we have community input. Um, and you know I, I will be a person of course that's available and in talking with me about your ideals and talking me, with me about um, where you think things should be at. You know I, I'm a proponent of um, attending to the constituency. I do that I do that as I, as I serve now. Um, so I just really feel that being engaged, getting out there to vote, reading and researching the information, coming to the town halls, coming to the visioning forums, coming to everything you can. Of course, I know that there's lives and, you know, you have your own lives, but doing as much as you can to research, you know, and, uh, of course, my biggest thing is have balance. We need to have balance. You know, just with so much division in the world today with everything, you know, of course, politics and whatnot, you know, for me. You know, I really feel we just need to, there's, both sides have very good arguments in every forum, and we just got to come together and come to a solution. I always look for one win, and I look for a consensus, so that's what I feel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Denise. Okay. So first off, and to me, get involved, because again, no platform here. I need to know what your needs are, and that would be getting involved with your supervisor um, when elected, again. One on one, I will come meet with you, I will look at your problems, I will see what's needed, get involved with me. And we can, we can do a lot, but I have to have involvement. Um, stay involved, even when your issue gets resolved, whether you're happy about it or you're upset about the, re the resolution, stay involved. There's gonna be other issues that you can learn and, and we can all grow together because I can't speak for EJ, but I'm growing and I'm learning about all of this every day. And I can't do that without the input of the community. So to help with illegal dumping, clean up any blight you see. Spread the word, take, take pride, and with that, I'm not talking down to anybody, but it's the, another age old saying, if you clean up your property, everybody's gonna look around you and go, hmm, maybe I should clean up mine too. So it's just this community pride that we need to really, really restore because I don't think it's there. And that comes again with getting involved with each other and taking place and, and working together at whatever the issues are. My biggest pet peeve that I learned when I got into this government thing, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that, uh, is people spread a lot of talk before they actually know the facts. 
So the biggest thing to me is, is call, get the facts, and then we can go out and spread the word. It's kind of like you know spreading the gospel or something. You, you read it right from there. So get the facts so that we can all be on the same level playing field and there's not miscommunication running around because it takes a lot more time to mitigate miscommunication instead of if we're all running on the same page together because we communicate, we can go much faster. Thank you. Okay, the final question. And I'm going to see how fast you guys are on your feet after. We're going to let you guys ask each other a question. Well, so we'll start with Denise. If you want to take a second, if you have a question for EJ, and EJ if you have a question for you. It could be anything about what you've heard tonight or just through the whole campaign. Or just generally, like what's your favorite color? Or... <laughs> Do you get as nervous as I do? Yes. <laughs> Your turn. Hmm. Are you going to go on KPFZ? Can I, am I allowed to answer that? I have, I have been on KPFZ. Yes, yeah, she has been. I have been. Well, I'll go um, again. Let me, just call me. I, you know, I, don't, I don't really have one. I think it's pretty much the same thing. We'll just go with that. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's move into our um, into our closing statements. You cover a lot of territory tonight, so we're going to give each of you two minutes just to wrap up. If there's anything you want to go back and revisit, any new ideas you want to share, feel free. We're going to go in reverse alphabetical order, so that would mean that we will start with Denise. So whenever you're ready, two minutes. I like to open with thank you and I like to close with thank you because again, if these types of forums were not being held, our voices wouldn't be heard half as much. Okay? So the decision to elect a Lake County Supervisor is very important for the North Shore. We need an advocate with experience, with leadership and skills to hit the ground running day one. I believe I have those skills to be able to offer you the greatest opportunity without a lapse in time for a learning curve in government. I miss it. My husband will testify he thinks I'm nuts. I miss the work I was doing. It doesn't matter what district we would have moved to, I would have gotten involved because I miss the public service. I miss helping resolve issues. I miss getting things done and basically, I have a big long thing I could say, <laughs> but the, the, the bottom line is I was very proud to be able to serve our community in the capacity that I have, and I would really be honored for your vote on June 5th so I can help District 3 along with the rest of the county because we all live here, the whole county, we're all together in this, but District 3 needs a lot of help, and I really want to be those boots on the street doing it for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, EJ. Yes, um, I'll add to one of the things I realized after I went on a spiel about something that um, I know that um, the, the current leadership that's in place um, in the, in the, as the county supervisors, they've, they've had to focus a lot of attention on the fires. You know, So I, I really know that that's taken a lot of attention away from some of the things they plan to do. So really, um, I, I think they've you know done their best to to you know to juggle and, and deal with uh, this vision 2028. Um, I um, for me you know I I, I feel honored that I am running for this position right now because um, of course like, like I said before my ancestors you know they in each area from Blue Lakes to Glen Haven. You know, we've occupied that area at one time or another. So for me, you know, just just to be able to say that I ran for the position that you know my ancestors are from, it makes me feel really proud. And if I'm if, if I'm so um, if I'm so humbled that people vote for me to be the district lead supervisor, I'll be honored, and I'll be, I feel I'll feel blessed that I'm able to serve my my um, ancestral lands. Um, so um, for me. Uh, just, I'm just thanking you for the opportunity. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. And um, I, you know, I, I, I like to, I like to attack issues, uh, and I like to deal with them. 
I like to be engaged, and I like to follow, and I will follow through. And uh, I, um, I just uh, thank you again to Lake Lake News for having this, and, uh, and thank you again. Thank you. Well, that ends our District 3 Supervisorial Candidates Forum. Thank you both very much, E.J. Crandall and Denise Lustelo. I should point out they both uh, participated in another forum earlier today, so they're pretty forumed out. So we're very grateful that they both agreed to be here and to answer all these questions for the last uh, just a little over an hour. Thank you to all the community members who sent in questions over the last several days and to those of you who were here tonight. We have one more forum for the, for the primary season that we'll be uh, putting on on May 14th here for the district attorney candidates, Stephen Brown and Susan Cronus, so we're looking forward to that. We want to thank our co-sponsors, the Lake County Bar Association and the Lake County Economic Development Corporation who, again, gave us invaluable help this year. Um, and we will also have this, uh, this event will be online so that you can revisit it and uh, see how some of the questions were answered. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Larson. Thank you very much for taking part and for being here and have a great night.